you're in an extraordinary position to be a change agent. But when you look back at your career and the pivotal moments that, that you've experienced that made you the leader you are today, what have been some of the most formative setbacks or failures that perhaps taught you the most powerful lessons to get to where you are today? I think the most powerful lesson I ever learned was the power of persistence. In, in a political career, it's not usual that there's flash in the pan success. And if there is, it can evaporate quite, uh, quite quickly. So you have to be persistent. And, and I can think of a, of a time when I was really struggling to establish myself as a credible party leader, opposition leader, and potential prime minister. And not infrequently, there would be whispers around that there'd be a challenge. And uh, I remember on one of these occasions ringing a couple of very close friends and saying, well, what's your advice? They said, just stand there. You, know, you have to believe you're the best for this job. And the lesson I took from that was, if you don't believe in yourself, how can you expect others to believe in you? You have to have a very strong sense of self-belief to rise to and stay in leadership positions. You have to really believe that you can do it. Now, that belief needs to be grounded on something solid. And the something solid is that you, you put in the hard yards, you do your homework, you're properly briefed, uh, you, you, you really make the effort to make it succeed. But in the end, you have to believe in yourself. What was it like as a woman in terms of the criticism that you faced? How did your gender influence the spotlight that you were under? Well, th this was interesting because I came out of a background where I really believed girls could do anything. I think this was greatly assisted by the fact that I had no brothers and grew up on a farm, so there were no girls' jobs and boys' jobs, there were just jobs. And then I went to an all-girl grammar school, so again, thought to believe that we could do anything. Then I went to university, and there weren't a lot of women role models on the staff at university, but we were the post-war baby boomers, and again, we believed we could do anything. Now, I first started to find that not everybody shared this opinion when I stood for a, a safe constituency for my party. And uh, the criticism started to come out, and to some extent that really accelerated when I became the leader of the party and leader of the opposition. And people started to focus on you know, the peripheral things. Uh, how's your hair done? You know, are your teeth straight? <laughs> Is your voice too low? It was pathetic, really, uh, and taps in perhaps to a, a deeper misogyny, which uh, no society has really entirely managed to eradicate. But how do you deal with it? You deal with it by being professional. And with media, I think being professional is extremely important. In the end, you can't be too chummy because media have a job to do. You have a job to do. Now, you actually need each other because without media, the politician's job will never be known about. And uh, the media need us because they need stories. So we have to work on those positive synergies. Sometimes things get a little tense, but, but in general, it's a professional working relationship you strive for. You've been described as one of the most powerful women in the world, not just in the work you've done politically for New Zealand, but now on the global stage. How do you define power? Well, what is power? It's obviously not in the position of someone like me. Autocratic power, where you issue an edict and people say, yes, ma'am, <laughs> and do it. And, and what I like about the way Forbes is now looking at leadership is that it is recognizing soft power as well as uh, the executive power that goes with being head of a major corporation or head of a country. And soft power is a lot about influence. It's a lot about thought leadership. It's a lot about ideas. It's a lot about encouraging people to uh, think of solutions, think that things can be done. So I think that's the, the territory that I'm in. I've always thought that power should be seen, in a sense, as a neutral concept. You can use it for good or you can use it for ill. My task is to use it for good. What advice do you think you'd be giving yourself when you wake up each morning and try and continue to do what you need to do? What do you need to, to tell yourself and, and remind yourself to push forward now? Well, I have to keep a sense of perspective because sometimes the, the challenges are pretty overwhelming and I give speeches where I talk about what, what are the challenges to attaining a state of, of sustainable de development and they're, they're rather a long and, and, and weighty list. So what I like about 
UNDP and the work at the moment is we do do practical things. You know, we, we don't just you know, waffle and talk. Out in the world, I have a string of very committed people in our country offices who are supporting countries and communities to adapt to climate change, to tackle poverty, to improve their governance, improve their parliaments, uh, open up space for the, the community organisations, recover from crisis. I like that because it's doing something about the problems, not just talking about them, but doing something about them.